Hello and welcome to Ag PhD. I'm Brian Hefty. And I'm Darren Hefty. Thanks for joining us today. There's a lot of talk in the industry about cover crops, and really even non-farmers are talking about cover crops. We're going to discuss them a little bit today and, and give you some ideas of things you may consider if you're putting in a cover crop. Well, one of the other things a lot of people are talking about is dicamba weed control this year. A lot of people were super excited to go spray dicamba on the new extend tree. But you know what? In some cases, that dicamba didn't work as well as it used to work. How come? Is the new stuff not as good? Well, we want to talk today about how you get better weed control with dicamba. That's well, going to be important if you have our Weed of the Week. We'll show you how to stop this tough weed later in the show. But first, here's our Farm Basics. Farm Basics is brought to you by the Liberty Link Trait and Liberty Herbicide from Bayer. The most reliable weed management solution, Liberty Link and Liberty Herbicide are the link to efficient row crop production and sustainable weed management. How do nutrients get into plants? During our Farm Basics time today, we're going to talk about the three different ways that nutrients can get into plants and which nutrients move in each of those ways. The main way, and we've talked about this for years, is nutrients are going to move into plants with water. That's called mass flow. There's also diffusion and there's root interception. What diffusion is, is when you've got a higher concentration of a nutrient in one area and it moves to an area of lower concentration. With root interception, pretty simple, the root intercepts or gets right through into that area of nutrient and pulls it in that way. But mass flow is the main way that we're always going to talk about here in Ag PhD because that's how pretty much all nutrients are going to get into plants other than phosphorus. Phosphorus, its main way in is diffusion, but all the rest of them, it's mass flow. So in other words, if you have really dry weather conditions, your soil is very dry, guess what? You're gonna have an awfully difficult time getting nutrients into plants, which is why people talk so much about irrigation or praying for rain, as we often do on the farm. We need some moisture to get our nutrients into the plant and properly feed that plant. We certainly see it green up in most crops right after a rain, and people think, well, they needed the water. And yes, plants do need water, there's no doubt about it. But just like Brian said, with the water comes a lot of nutrients in the soil solution into that plant. So a quick flush of nutrients in through mass flow certainly greens those plants up. When I think about diffusion, though, I want to focus on that for just a second. So going from a high concentration to a low concentration. So you've got a plant out there that needs phosphorus. And, and diffusion is a real key way of getting phosphorus into plants. A lot of farmers will band phosphorus with the row. Like for example with corn planting across the United States, many farmers will either put phosphorus right in the furrow, so in the little trench that they'll drop the seeds in, or they'll put it in by a method called two by two placement, where they'll go two inches over and two inches down from the seed and put a band of fertility there. So they put a concentrated band of phosphorus and then as the root system moves around that band, with diffusion, that phosphorus can move into the root. It's been a good way that farmers have done things for many years. So Darren, you talk about diffusion with phosphorus. The thing I think about with that is we want to have high concentrations in the soil. If you just have a whole bunch of low concentration out there of phosphorus, that's not going to cut it. We've got to have higher level areas. Well, also with root interception, that's the, the third way that nutrients are getting into those plant roots. I look at calcium and magnesium as being real key ones. When you look at soil tests, they're by far the highest parts per million you're going to see on the test, and root interception is how they're getting into the plant in addition to mass flow. So once again, it's root interception, diffusion, and the primary way for almost all nutrients is mass flow in terms of how these nutrients get into the plant. The unfortunate thing is that's also how they get into weeds. So you have to stop weeds like our Weed of the Week. Can you identify this week's weed? So far, looking behind the machine, I'm thoroughly impressed with them. Compared to the older concaves we were running, we were finding about 40 grains, and we put these new ones in it, and it's hard to find one. After the break, I found out about these concaves. While we were down, we put these concaves in, and it was like a different machine. I'd say we probably saved three to five bushels to the acre. I probably tripled my money just by putting these in.
Leading the charge in strip tillage for more than a decade, the Soil Warrior brings the future to your farm today. And now we have Jenny in the field talking with Farmer Dave. Dave, your orchard looks amazing. How is your season shaping up? Well, I'm using the starting lineup that my agroliquid coach suggested through my irrigation system. The trees have gained measurable girth. Everything's looking really good. I'm on track to get my fruit to the market a full week ahead of my neighbors. So you're feeling good about finishing up this season? Absolutely. Agroliquid is my championship team. Increase your productivity with Hypro's dual react control system. The dual nozzle body design allows you to drive at the speed you want while maintaining the rate and droplet size you need. Hypro, helping you spray better. Hey, I'm Lisa Kelly. You might know me from history's ice road truckers, but this summer, I'm looking for a change of scenery. We'll be visiting Love's Travel Stops in search of people who, like Dello, are game changers. I can't wait to meet as many of you as possible. Join me as I make my way across America with Chevron to get the word out about its game-changing heavy-duty diesel engine oil, Dello 400, with Isosin Advanced Technology. We'll see you out there on the road all summer long with Chevron, Dello, and Love's. Invisible, invasive, underestimated, nematodes are stealing over 10% of yields and current protection methods aren't enough. But a new seed treatment technology controls nematodes before they attack. Introducing Nemastrike technology. It provides broad spectrum control from the start and stays in the root zone as plants grow. Take back your bushels with Nemastrike technology. Strike where nematodes attack. How do you make dicamba work better? This year there were a lot of performance complaints with dicamba. We want to talk about why and how you fix those things today. When you think about weed control from dicamba, let's face it, we were all pretty excited that, hey, we have another tool that we can use in-crop in cotton, in-crop in soybeans, uh, two crops that really have trouble with post-emerge weed control, and dicamba has been a product that's worked really well for us in corn. So for me, I look at, here's a product that's been out for 40 years, maybe more, and it's worked. Why did we have trouble this year? Look at some of the things that were different this year versus years before. Well, the whole reason is we handicapped the product. So some people are blaming, oh, it's Extendamax or it's Ingenia. No, I don't believe that at all. I believe Ingenia and Extendamax are just as good as Clarity and Banville. For example, when Clarity came out versus Banville, was there any performance difference? No. And Clarity was a different salt of dicamba, just like Ingenia is a different salt of dicamba. With Extendamax, all Extendamax is is old clarity plus vapor grip. So there's no way the performance is going to be different. Here's the reason why we had the problem and why I say we've handicapped this product. Now you can't use ammonium sulfate and ammonium sulfate absolutely makes dicamba work better, especially on water hemp and palmer pigweed that are nitrogen sensitive weeds. Also, you have to put a drifter tartan in, which makes the droplet size bigger, and you have to use ultra coarse low drift nozzles. Okay, if we're talking about that, you've got this enormous droplet out there, and if you're only spraying 10 gallons of water, for example, what happens? You just have a few great big droplets, and you can see it even on some of these weeds where there's a, a blotch of product there and the rest of the plant is completely untouched. So those are the three reasons, in my opinion, why we had all the performance complaints this year. Here's another one, Brian, that, that you didn't mention, just unrealistic expectations. There, there are many farmers that I've talked to across the country that just expected, hey, dicamba is gonna work like the status that I'm using in corn. Status has been great, well, that's just dicamba, right? No, it's not. It's actually dicamba plus another active ingredient that's actually carrying even more of the load than dicamba is. Status has a pretty low rate of dicamba. It has a higher rate of diflufenzapyr. And, and that just changes completely how that dicamba works. We saw many weeds this year where the lower part of the stem and down into the root system really swelled up with a dicamba application. That's how it's supposed to work. But we don't see that with status. Status is different because that diflufenzapyr concentrates the dicamba at the growing points. We see growing points blow out rather than that whole stalk and, and stem on the lower part of the plant. All right, here's the other reason why we saw performance complaints in our region this year, even on our own farm. I was super disappointed with dicamba. And the weeds were relatively small. 
we did everything according to the label, but the problem was we had very cold temperatures. Don't ever forget, with the Camba and all these growth regulator products like 2,4-D, their mission is to grow the plant to death. Okay, if the plant isn't very actively growing, how can you grow it to death? It's not going to work. We had nighttime temperatures in the 40s when we were out spraying dicamba. Yes, the daytime temp hit 65, 70 degrees, so it's not horrible. But still, if you've stacked all these other things against it, no ammonium sulfate, great big nozzles, uh, using a drift retardant so you have huge droplet size, you have poor coverage, what are you going to do? So the way I look at this thing going forward, yes, I would love to be able to go back to using ammonium sulfate, using uh, flat fan nozzles, small spray droplets, and no drift retardant. That absolutely would improve the performance. But if that's off label, we can't do that. What can we do? We can wait for better weather conditions. We can spray when the weeds are smaller. And you know, really the big thing here is you've got to look at, hey, if I'm not using a pre emerge herbicide. I have so many weeds out there, and especially then, you got to move up to 15 to 20 gallons of water per acre. Even if you have used the pre and you only have a few weeds out there, you still might want to go up to 15 to 20 gallons just to get that better spray coverage, and that's one of the big things we missed out on this year. Don't forget, the industry is not trying to sell a product. Uh, companies like Monsanto, BASF, and others aren't just trying to sell you dicamba, they're trying to sell you a result. The result is clean fields and excellent weed control. Obviously, we didn't get that in all cases this year. Now, if you talk to uh, many of the people that are raising Extend soybeans and, and also using the dicamba in cotton, many of those guys would say, you know what, my weed control was great. I don't know what you're talking about. So in some cases, like Brian was mentioning, the conditions were right and things worked very, very well and, and expectations were met. But in other areas, they weren't. So there are going to be some changes. I would expect to continually see some changes being made uh, throughout this summer and late summer here and fall season going into next year's growing season, you're going to see some different things. Like, for example, you may see more water being used. And, and I know the industry looks at this as, what? Well, that, I don't like that. I don't want to have to use more gallons. But in cases where farmers did use more gallons, like 15 gallons instead of 10 gallons of spray solution, spraying Ingenia or Extendamax, they did have better control. With bigger droplets, this way we at least get more droplets out there uh, to get a little bit better control. There may be things like that that uh, might not be the most fun things in the world, but there are certainly going to be some changes going into next year to help you uh, with more uh, possibilities on the label to get better control. Personally, I'd like to see a higher rate labeled. It's kind of like when I go back to when Liberty first came out. 22 ounces was kind of the standard rate. That was way too low a rate. You need at least a quart of Liberty if you're going to do a halfway decent job. There just isn't enough rate there with the dicamba when you're stacking all these other things against it. So hopefully we'll see a higher labeled rate in the future. But until then, like we say, best thing to do is spray when the weeds are small, use more water, and spray wind conditions are great. In other words, 85 in the daytime, maybe 70 for a low. If you can hit that, you should have pretty decent performance. There are many different weed species that dicamba did work well on this year. We'll talk about our weed of the week and if dicamba is an option for it later in the show. Being a farmer means securing your land and livelihood for the future. Harvest Solutions from Capello USA have the grit to get you there. Our product lines for corn, sunflowers, and forage are designed for efficiency and longevity, preventing harvest loss while minimizing maintenance and downtime. To do everything you can to advance your farmland to the next generation, call us at 855-CAPELLO or visit us at capellousa.com. Capello USA, Italian craftsmanship, American grit. With the success of the Case IH Diger Quad Track and Magnum Road Track tractors, it's no secret why Case IH is the leader of the track. So it wasn't surprising when the competition started imitating us. But only Case IH offers a five axle design to give you a smoother ride, more power to the ground, with less berming and compaction. Still, we're flattered. In fact, if we weren't already red, <laughs> we'd be blushing. Invisible, invasive, underestimated, nematodes are stealing over 10% of yields and current protection methods aren't enough. But a new seed treatment technology controls nematodes before they attack. Introducing Nemastrike technology. It provides broad spectrum control from the start and stays in the root zone as plants grow. Take back your bushels with Nemastrike technology. 
Strike, where nematodes attack. We love the quality, we love the construction. We're looking forward to working with Morton in the future. They have this down to a science, they know exactly what you want, they know how to make it happen, it's an easy process. I would definitely recommend Morton. From the first time I met the salesman to the last nail that the crew put in, it has been a positive and professional experience. I'm so happy I found Morton because they just make the job so easy. Find the building of your dreams at mortonbuildings.com. One of the topics we get the most questions on every year is cover crops, especially in these last three to five years. The cover crop thing has just exploded. Why do you think that is, Darren? Well, there are certainly a lot of benefits from cover crops, and, and uh, you know, when you think about it, if we can reduce erosion, we can potentially reduce compaction, if we can hold nutrients in place in the field, those are all good things. The They're positives things. of cover crops are really good. They are, but see, here's the thing that I think is driving this the most. Everybody is talking about soil health. Everybody says, boy, if you have a healthier soil, then everything's gonna work out great for you, and cover crops are the key. Well, I don't look at cover crops as the key at all. I look at them as another tool. Yes, cover crops can be important, they can be beneficial, but you can't neglect everything else that's going on in your farm. So all I'm trying to say here is, we're gonna to talk today about the benefits of cover crops, and that's great. But don't be thinking, well, you know, all I need to do is put some cover crops in, and my yields are gonna be fantastic, and everything's gonna be perfect. My soil is gonna be the healthiest ever. It's gonna take time, and it's gonna take a lot of effort in other ways too, besides just putting those cover crops in the ground. The benefits of cover crops are well documented, but I wanna talk about some of the issues that people had this year. When we look at a cool spring, uh, where it was tough for guys to get out there, it was tough to get the burn down done, uh, we saw some issues with insects, for example, and it's one of those things that you do have to be prepared for. Uh, a lot of the guys that are doing cover crops now are actually in conventional till. The no-till guys, they've adapted cover crops in many cases. They're used to what's going on with lots more residue out in the field. The conventional till guys, they're not. If you're going from, hey, I wanna see that field black in the spring, uh, to all of a sudden, hey, I've got all this cover crop growth out there and I'm gonna seed right into it, it's a whole different situation. One of the things that popped up this year in some areas was slugs. Uh, slugs can be a big time issue, especially if you've got lots of cover and you've got some moisture. Uh, the other thing is other insects like armyworms, for example. So we saw more calls at our Ag PhD radio show from guys that are putting cover crops in for the first time, or maybe they've just done it for a couple of years saying, what do I do about these bugs? I've got all these bugs out there and I wanna seed my crop in. I don't want the bugs just to mow my crop off. So it's something to think about uh, if you're putting cover crops in that insects could be an issue, slugs could be an issue. Yeah, along those same lines, I look at disease there could be issues with disease, especially if you don't pick the right cover crop. In other words, over the years, we've typically rotated corn and soybeans. Why do we do that? Because corn is a grass crop, soybeans are a broadleaf crop. What do we always tell you with cover crops? We'd like to see you put a grass and a broadleaf out there, and maybe something that's gonna go with deep roots like a turnip or radish. So now you've got several different species out there. Are we really rotating crops now? I don't think so. So that's one of the reasons we see more insects, we see more disease problems. There are some issues with cover crops. So yes, I love cover crops in the fact that we can reduce weed pressure. We can absolutely save soil and reduce erosion. We can break up some compaction. We can build organic matter in the soil. We can have some more forage for livestock. All those things are great. But what we're trying to say here is, Anytime you're gonna make a major change to your farm, like adding cover crops, you gotta immediately start scouting more. You've gotta immediately start thinking more, all right, how is this gonna change my entire system? And it may require you to invest more money in your actual crop, in insecticide, in fungicide, in scouting, all these types of things, things are going to change. That's the one thing that I can promise you, things are going to change, mostly for the good with cover crops, but there might be a little bit for the bad as well. 
I've got two last observations to make from this spring. One is weed control, where we've got well-established cover crops. We definitely saw less pressure from mare's tail and some of the winter annual weeds that have been a real problem for many farmers across the country. The other thing is areas that were too wet. If they had a well-established cover crop, we saw that cover crop pulling in that excess moisture and it allowed farmers to get out in those fields a little sooner. So that was a good thing. It could also be a bad thing in areas that were too dry, uh, when the cover crop didn't get burned off early enough, whether it was in the fall or early enough in the spring, we did see some moisture loss in some of those areas that definitely has to go into the planning for next year. Well, let's take that a step further. That's the reason I don't love cover crops in the Western Corn Belt, unless they're killed off early in the fall, is they're sucking moisture out. It's the same thing if you leave your alfalfa out there and you wanna kill it off in the spring, you've already lost a bunch of moisture. In the Western Corn Belt, you can't afford to do that. So just make sure you're getting that cover crop killed off in the fall and maybe even early in the fall if you're in a dry area. And don't think we're against cover crops because we're certainly not. We harvested wheat this summer and immediately following the combine was the drill putting in our cover crop. We definitely see the benefit of having a cover crop in the field. It's just important as you make big changes on your farm to try and adapt to those changes, get out in the field more, keep an eye on things and make observations and changes going into future years. One of the things we hope you don't see is our Weed of the Week, but if you do, we'll tell you how to stop it coming up next. The Weed of the Week is sponsored by the Enlist Weed Control System from Dow AgroSciences, a new herbicide and trait system that will build on glyphosate. Farming isn't just in the land, it's in you. Take control of weeds like never before. Enlist builds on the Roundup Ready system, combining proven control of a new 2,4-D and glyphosate in Enlist Dual Herbicide. Protect what matters without changing the way you farm. Talk to your seed or crop protection supplier today. Our weed of the week is pineapple weed. It's actually one of my favorite weeds to find out there, Brian, because when the heads get mature and yellow, you can squeeze them and it smells like pineapple. And the other reason that I like this weed is it doesn't compete heavily against our crops. Well, the reason I like it is I can kill it pretty easily. 2,4-D and dicamba around the farmyard in a lot of the non-crop areas, there's no real big problem here. Just make sure you're using a decent rate, but this is not a real difficult weed to control. It's just an annual weed. Now, most of the broadleaf herbicides work just fine in wheat. If you ever saw pineapple weed, you can smoke it post-emerge with Husky, or you could use pre-emerge Sharpen. In soybeans, I like the pre-emerge treatment with, well, anything with Sharpen, Valor, Authority works very well. Post-emerge, you can kill it with Roundup or Liberty, or uh, you can use Flexstar or something like that would work too. In corn, I like dicamba, I like status especially. Pre-emerge, I like verdict. Well, that's it for our Weed of the Week, Pineapple Weed, but stay tuned, Iron Talk is coming up next. And now we have Jenny in the field talking with Farmer Dave. Dave, this corn has some noticeable differences. Tell us what's going on here. Well, I know AgriLiquid had helped me out a lot last year, but I've been using my old fertilizer program for a long time. So I decided to do a comparison, AgriLiquid versus a conventional program. So far, the differences are pretty obvious. Looks clear to me. Absolutely. AgriLiquid is going to take the championship here. Hey, I'm Lisa Kelly. You might know me from History's Ice Road Truckers. But this summer, I'm looking for a change of scenery. We'll be visiting Love's Travel Stops in search of people who, like Dello, are game changers. I can't wait to meet as many of you as possible. Join me as I make my way across America with Chevron to get the word out about its game-changing, heavy-duty diesel engine oil, Dello 400, with Isosin Advanced Technology. We'll see you out there on the road all summer long with Chevron, Dello, and Love's. With wheat, greater access to N, P, and K means greater yield potential. Improve the availability of key nutrients for your winter wheat by putting Quick Roots Microbial Seed Inoculant to work in your fields. Containing two powerful microbes, Quick Roots technology promotes early season vigor, improved stock strength, and ultimately maximum yield potential for your wheat. Learn how you can put the power of nature to work at MonsantoBioAg.com quickroots. 
Introducing the SoilMax ZD48, the newest addition to the SoilMax Gold Digger lineup. The first plow designed for smaller class tractors, the ZD48 has been tested on tractors weighing between 10,000 and 16,000 pounds with excellent results. Designed for row crop farms, vineyards, irrigation, and specialty crop farms. The SoilMax ZD48 will install tile up to 48 inches deep as well as install 3 or 4 inch tile. The ZD48 truly opens up the world of tile installation to more farms than ever before. Are you looking for an easy way to apply dry powdered products to your stored grain? Do you want to use the applicator recommended by industry leaders for products like Diacon D and other dry powder products? Changing Time CT applicators successfully apply a diversity of products quickly, easily, and accurately. The innovative CT applicators are designed to give you the most accurate application of products such as talc, inoculants, fertilizers, and other dry products. For commercial use or on the farm, you need the applicator industry leaders are using. CT applicators for the changing times. Iron Talk is brought to you by Case IH. The AFS Connect Farm Management System from Case IH connects you and only you to the information you need most from your equipment from anywhere at any time. AFS Connect only from Case IH. you think a combine fire could never happen to you? Learn how to prevent a fire in today's Iron Talk. Combine fires happen every year. I realize manufacturers have added many safety features and design upgrades to newer combine models, but anytime you have diesel fuel, oil, dry stalks, chaff, and a heat source, you've got some risk. Nearly every farmer out there can think of a friend, relative, or neighbor who's either had a close call with a combine fire or had a total machine loss. Today, we'll give you some tips on preventing a combine fire on your farm. Your biggest risk area is around the engine. Most fires start there, and for good reason. That's where much of the heat is generated and where chaff and debris tend to settle. Part of the reason chaff builds up around engines is due to the presence of grease, oil, and fuel that have either leaked out or been spilled. It's wet, it's sticky, and together with the dry chaff and crop residues is almost the perfect recipe for a fire. Preventing problems begins with a thorough cleaning. A hot water pressure wash will remove grease and oil buildup. On our farm, we also add a product called Fleet Degreaser through our pressure washer to speed up the process. If there are no new leaks or spills of oil, grease, or fuel, a daily blowdown with your air compressor could be sufficient enough to decrease your risk of combine fires. Especially during corn harvest, finding the time to do some daily cleaning can be pretty tough. Just 15 minutes a day, though, is well worth your time. Plus, climbing around on your combine on a daily basis is a great idea to look for any potential problems or upcoming maintenance items. So don't be a statistic on your farm this year. Start with a hot water pressure wash around the engine and anywhere else that grease, oil, or fuel buildup may be on your equipment. Then use compressed air on a daily basis to clear away chaff and other crop debris. Taking just a few extra minutes a day could keep you and your family safe from a combine fire. That's it for today's Iron Talk, but now, back to the show. Closed captioning for Ag PhD is sponsored by Norwood Sales. If you're looking to expand your farm's grain handling, you want everything to be fast and efficient. The Quick Belt from Norwood Sales is your all-around grain handling solution. Our conveyor-based system uses an 18-inch belt and a 10-inch tube, which minimizes seed damage while moving more than 10,000 bushels an hour. That's fast enough to fill a semi in six minutes. Plus, our hood is designed to gently direct the flow of grain straight down, keeping your crop in condition. Keep your grain and your farm moving with the Quick Belt from Norwood Sales. That's all the time we have for today's show, but before we go, we want to invite you to tune in to the Ag PhD radio show. You'll find us on Sirius XM Channel 147 each weekday at 2 p.m. Central. Don't miss the next Ag PhD TV show. We'll have another Weed of the Week, Farm Basics, Iron Talk, and a whole lot more. I'm Darren Hefty. And I'm Brian Hefty. Thanks for watching Ag PhD. Did you realize that a healthy soil only contains about 50% dirt? In order for the soil microbes and plants to work together properly, soil should contain 25% air and 25% water. Today's farming practices are designed around maintaining that healthy balance. To learn more, visit the Responsible Nutrient Management Foundation at rnmf.org.